The Behind the Book Lecture Series is made possible by World eBook Library, the world's largest database of portable eBooks for academic research, and the World Heritage Encyclopedia, the world's knowledge at your fingertips. What makes government good? And his answer was that good government came from the people, was for the people, was by the people. Locke was so influential on a minority revolution in North America, in a country that would come to be called the United States. John Locke was one of the great intellectual thinkers of the 17th century. Uh, he was born in the 1630s, and he's considered in some ways the father of liberal political thought, and, and many say the intellectual father of the American Revolution. John Locke was an intellectual from the get-go, from the day he was born. His father was a lawyer. He grew up educated at the best private schools of his region and his day. He would attend Oxford University. But typically of an educated man in his era, he wasn't educated in just one thing. He was a physician by trade, educated in medicine, but then would make his name for himself as an empiricist, a scientific experimenter. Locke was part of the small group of men in his age that were dedicated to the proposition that truth came from observing evidence. Locke got into writing about politics because many of the great questions of his age were political in nature. He came up in the age of uh, the great British Civil War in which it was important to have political ideas and to take sides in politics that were literally dividing families and dividing townships at the time. Locke spoke into that violent milieu with ideas about good government, about how we could protect ourselves from precisely the sort of instability that were ruining so many lives uh, around him throughout his country. Locke was a prolific author, but his grand work is considered uh, the two treaties on government. The first essay, the first treaties, uh, was against patriarchalism, this idea that people governed because they had an inherent right to govern. If you were uh, a king, you had a right to rule, but that was given by God and it was inherent in your, in your family. The idea that government could be a summation of individuals and could guarantee those individual rights, uh, that was revolutionary. The second treatise uh, on government uh, was about the origin and the proper extent of government in the Lockean ideal. Here he talked about the social contract. He said that government was a deal between the people who were governed and the people doing the governing. And the people who were doing the governing had certain obligations to provide benefits to the people who were being governed. And the people being governed had an obligation to bear certain responsibilities toward government. It was an arrangement. It was a social contract. Locke's contribution to social contract theory was to defend the idea of the individual. In the state of nature, Locke argued, humans were pretty good people. They were fairly responsible. They just needed a little help from a governing arrangement in order to structure a society for the common welfare of everybody involved. Because people were essentially pretty good, pretty rational, pretty responsible, you could trust them to form good government. And if in the course of years, the government that was ruling people became odious, became sick, or became flawed, then the people not only had a right, but a responsibility to overthrow that government. 
This idea was fantastically influential in the American Revolution and then a short while later in the French Revolution itself. In fact, the leaders of both revolutions quoted Locke. Locke was the first person to systematically argue for a separation of powers in government. It was necessary for a just government to have checks and balances so that authority did not become odious and did not forget that it was supposed to serve the people. This idea of, of separation of powers, that no one man or no one institution should call all the shots, well, that became very influential to the Founding Fathers of America as they set up a government system based on a separation of executive and legislative and judicial. Another idea that Locke championed was the idea of the separation of church and state. In his society, there were two great authorities. There was the monarchical government, and then there was church authority which ostensibly was a faith and a moral authority, but had become politically powerful. Locke argued that church and government should be separated. This firstly protected the church from interference from the government, but also to, uh, to keep the church from transforming into a political power. Uh, the political power of the church in Europe in his age was sometimes large and often abusive. Of course, American uh, settlement by uh, early British colonists had a strong religious separatist aspect to it. And so they loved this idea that religion should be pursued in freedom. The idea that the individual human had inherent rights given by the Creator. Nobody thought along those lines. People had no individual rights. You had a social station in Locke's day. It took Locke and a few men like him to convince people that the idea of individual rights was, was valid. If Locke showed up today in the United States, he would be blown away by the success of what was sort of a, a Lockean experiment. I think he would, be, he would be flattered and he would be super excited to see the extent of representation the discourse of individual rights that has become just part of the way that we think and interact in America and the way that has spread around the world, even in his native England. John Locke did not specify that good government had to be representative democratic government. He just thought it had to be answerable to the people. It could be an answerable oligarchy. It might even be an answerable monarchy if the king or queen was particularly good at responding to the people. I think Locke's goal in writing the second treaties was to place before people an idea of just government that was both operable and sustainable. If he could manage to help create a government like this, a social contract that truly worked for everyone, then people would be happy. Some say that the phrase, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness is drawn directly from Locke. It certainly encapsulates what he wanted to see through a just government and in a just society. People were allowed to be people because people were pretty good. And people primarily lived before God, not before the state. So it's interesting to think about John Locke walking into an institution like the United Nations, which is a collection of all sorts of different governments. You have representative democracies, uh, you have dictatorships. Uh, there's still a couple um, socialist dictatorships. And I think, um, if given the chance, John Locke would preach in the UN. He would preach about responsible world government. Give him a stage like that, and he'd want to be influential.